Welcome to those who uh, who are in attendance here uh, late this afternoon, and thanks to both the generals and battalion for participating in this afternoon's Eastern Conference Championship Series media availability on the call today. Uh, we have Oshawa Generals head coach Derek Laxdahl, along with Captain Stuart Roloffs, uh, and from the North Bay Battalion, we have head coach Ryan Ulihan, along with Captain Liam Arnsby. Um, an exciting series shaping up both teams. Uh, loaded with great players, uh, veterans, and um, top finishers in the Eastern Conference. The Generals, of course, got here after a you know a thrilling end to the regular season that ended on a 12-game winning streak and resulted in them finishing the top spot in the conference. Uh, they got through both Barrie and Ottawa to reach this point uh, here where they'll be battling for the Bobby Orr Trophy. Of course, Bobby Orr, a former Oshawa General, great. Uh, the North Bay Battalion are here for the third straight year, and they're the first team since the uh, 2007 to 2009 Belleville Bulls to reach the East Final three straight years in a row. Um, North Bay has gotten through uh, Kingston and Sudbury here in the postseason after winning their third straight Central Division Championship. Uh, I'll start with a couple questions here. For those of you in attendance, if you have questions, uh, I will ask you to uh, to utilize the raise hand function so that I can develop a bit of a cue here, and then I'll work through uh, work through the list and we'll cover everybody off. Um, and for those asking questions, I'd ask for just limit it to one follow up to start, and I will make sure I try and get back around to you if you have further questions to ask. Uh, for myself, I'll, I'll begin with um, the higher seeded team. We'll start with the generals who start on home ice on Friday night and start with Coach Derek Lockstall, who was recently uh, voted OHL Coach of the Year. Uh, co coach, an extensive history in the Western Hockey League. You've, you've, you've put on a lot of miles and you've seen a lot of great playoff action. Um, what is it about this generals team? And I mean, in, in particular, um, there were a lot of struggles during the regular season against Ottawa, but you seem to figure those out in the last series. Maybe you can just walk us through um, what, how, how that happened and how your team managed to find success. Well, if you look at the uh, the makeup of our team there, we started the season without Kalen Ritchie for the first month and a half and Luke Torrance. And then obviously the addition of Connor Lockhart kind of came together in that early December. And from that point on, we started to take some strides, not take some strides, but instead of losing the one goal games, he started winning the one goal games. And he saw the evolution of, of players like Beckett Seneca, Luca Morelli, uh, Ben Danford, you know, just the youthfulness of our group starting to take some strides uh, throughout the season. And you saw Jacob Oster, who was just recently named uh, goalie of the year in the OHL. He really started to take some strides along the same time as the other players. So uh, with us being, uh, I think we're the fourth youngest team in the OHL. I think we're the youngest team left in the playoffs. You're seeing our guys take some huge strides. And I think that you saw that in January, February, March, and then obviously the finish to the season. So there's a lot of good things. And, you know, we had a great veteran uh, leadership group along with our captain, Stuart Roloffs. But uh, it's just kind of a combination of everything kind of hitting stride at the right moment. Stuart, for yourself, you've you've been around the league a while now, and you've obviously you've seen a lot, and you've you've experienced, not unlike Liam on the other side, you know what it's been like to go through the COVID pandemic and deal with those long days where you didn't know when you'd ever you know get back to playing. But here you are, a few years later, and you get to, you know, finish your OHL career in such a meaningful, um, such a meaningful way with big games every night. That has to feel great. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's every player's dream to uh, go on a long run and um, hopefully win a championship. So, uh, you know, I've, I've had a great time this year and, um, you know, I think we have a great team. Um, like Derek said, we're a younger team, but I think we've we've came a long way this year. We've grown a lot. We've matured a lot. And I think um, we've showed that so far in the playoffs. So uh, hopefully we can keep that going. Uh, we'll we'll shift over to the North Bay now for Coach Ulihan and and you know that second round matchup with Sudbury. I think a lot of people looked at that and thought that was going to go the distance. And I'm sure you certainly didn't expect a sweep. But maybe just to your team's credit, you could walk us through what brought that success. Clearly, a lot of buy-in from the whole group. Yeah, you know, certainly it it was a little bit of a a surprise for us. Um, you know, we knew. It was a pretty big monster we were going up against with the Sudbury Wolves and the talent and and the way that team was built. Um, but I got to give all the credit in the world to the guys in our room. You know, obviously we're we're going through some adverse times a little bit through here, and um, that's probably the first time I've I've spoken to that. You know, and and the guys it, they haven't used it as an excuse. There's been nothing but 
complete buy-in from this group and and really kind of the superpower of of our team is is the fact that they've been together for so long you know and and I think that kind of pulled them together here through these things and and obviously facing a rival in that second series sort of brought out the best in us and and what the guys are doing so um going to be a different challenge a fun challenge moving forward here but something that we're looking forward to uh, but that's kind of you know just the the credit that it goes to the room it goes to Liam he hasn't been able to play the last few games but he's done a lot from the sidelines and, and from the behind the scenes of getting this team prepared to play every day Liam yourself uh, wearing the C in North Bay and you have for for a few years now one of the longest if not maybe the longest serving captain in the league um, and, and as coach cited, some real adversity you faced with some absences like Anthony Romani and Dom DiVincentis, as well as yourself for the last few games. Um, as the captain of the team, what is it meant to see, you know, some of those other role players or maybe secondary guys step into bigger minutes and really excel? Yeah, it's huge. You know, obviously, uh, going into that series, we're down a few guys. And it's nice to see all the younger guys and new guys to our team come in and help us out and, uh, didn't have doubt in those guys. You know, we've been together for a while, and uh, it's nice to get the job done. Excellent. Um, our first question comes from Tim Kelly from Durham Region. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that it's been a long time since you, you, your, your teams have played each other. It was back in October when uh, North Bay beat Oshawa in Oshawa, and then – New Year's Eve, I think, when Oshawa won in overtime in North Bay. And both teams were quite a bit different, different personnel and um, different teams because you hadn't, the trade deadline hadn't come along and you hadn't added different players. What do you think it's going to be like facing each other now with so many months gone by since you played each other and, uh, you know, the playoff rounds you've gone through? Um, you think it's all going to be different now or? How do you think it's going to go? I'll, I'll just ask each each of you to respond to that. Maybe we'll start with uh, start with Coach Laxdahl and then Coach Ulahan can can respond. Well, I think if if you look at both teams, both teams have made additions at the trade deadline, and both teams finished very hard down the stretch. I don't think the style of play uh, will change much from from North Bay or to the Oshawa Generals. Both teams are. Um, you know, very structured. Uh, they defend well. Uh, both teams play hard. They compete hard. I think it's going to make for an exciting series. But uh, you know, from from the from the October game to the the January game, whenever that was, you know, you saw a lot of the same nucleus of players. And I think there's some great additions on both hockey clubs. And obviously, both teams are built for a long playoff run. So I think it's going to make for a great series for the fans. And I'll chime in a very similar from our standpoint too. the one interesting thing I can say is um, we played on that December 31st game and both teams, uh, when you look at our seasons and our records and uh, very similar the way we went through it, uh, as uh, coach Laxall said, we both teams thrived in the second half and finished very strong. But that December 31st game, I remember after the game, Oshawa uh, tied it late, beat us in overtime. But I remember we were talking as a staff of that's a good hockey team over there. Like these guys are, whoa, you know, and, and it was kind of right before they then took off. And from that moment, um, you know, they've been an exciting team to watch. We obviously haven't played each other since the calendar moved on to January 1st, but um, they were a team that I can thank a little bit because they're playing Sudbury a lot down the stretch run. And, and was watching them quite closely and, and cheering for them most nights because we were trying to catch Sudbury in the division and, and obviously Oshawa in the conference. So um, playing extremely good hockey, but I do think there's a lot of similarities when you look at how the teams are built, built with, you know, big, heavy four checking players like to play the game the right way. Um, very good special teams on both sides, goaltending strong. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a really tight one. I think most games are going to be played that way. And, and that's just the strengths of both hockey teams. If I could follow up um, just for the sake of Oshawa fans, Ryan, um, what's the status of, of 
Anthony Romani and Dom DeVincentis <laughs> and you know are are those guys going to be back in this series are they going to start um like everybody kind of wants to know cuz Romani was like your leading scorer and DeVincentis is a top goalie and uh when does Liam come back I, is he back for the opening game or does he have to miss another game i, I I was trying to keep track of that. You're asking for a lot of information. <laughs> I'm handling yeah. the questions behind the scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Liam's got one more game left here, and, and he'll be able to join us in game two. And um, both Dom and Anthony are week to week here with lower body injuries. All right. How about uh, the generals, Derek? Any Any injury problems, any issues? Um, right now we have uh, we have one defenseman that is out uh, with a lower body injury and um, and after that uh, I think that's Fraser McDonald McDonnell and uh, but after that we're we're pretty healthy right now knock on wood. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Uh, next, we will go to uh, to Brandon Caputo, who's with the uh, <laughs> GM's podcast. Brandon, you're up. Uh, my first question is for Coach Laxdahl. Coach, I wanted to uh, highlight uh, Dylan Roebrook real quick. You guys got him for an eighth-round pick from the Niagara Ice Dogs a few years ago. Obviously a, a big body, but hadn't really put it all together. And he comes over to your group. He has 53 points in the 68 games, gets drafted by the Rangers, and then this year explodes for 72 points in 68 games and leads your team in the playoffs right now. What have you seen in the evolution of his game and the growth of, of Dylan as an all-around player since he's come to your group? Well, that that's been that's an incredible uh, pickup by Roger Hunt, and our scouting staff here. Obviously, last year when I first came in, uh, we were pretty thin. Obviously, with uh, them trying to go for it a few years back when they're hosting the World Cup, and we had an opportunity to uh, trade for Dylan. And uh, when I watched video on him, I said for sure, you know, whatever it takes to get uh, Dylan into our lineup. But he's been a, a real great acquisition. His growth from his game, uh, from the start of last year to Christmas time to the end of the season, and even that one playoff round against Ottawa last year. And then getting himself drafted, just, you know, finding a way to be a big heavy forward and understanding how to play that way and play that way every night consistently. And he really, uh, he really uh, approached it with wide eyes and, and he, and he looked forward to it. And he's really uh, growing his game to the point where it's just, uh, you saw what he did this year, right from the start of the season. And he's fit right in. He plays center, he plays left wing. He's on the penalty kill. He's on the power play. Uh, he's like any big player. When he's not moving his feet, he's not effective. When he's moving his feet, he's really effective. And when he gets into some physical, uh, you know, uh, ruckuses or fights, he's really effective. Like he's such a big man. He had a, he had a great uh, fight there against Ottawa and kind of changed the flow of the game for. And, um, you know, and it's funny, ever since Rempe's kind of come onto the scenes with the Rangers, uh, Dylan has really picked up his game. He's, he sees the effectiveness of a big heavy player, what he can do, but uh, Dylan's got a great skill set. He skates well for a big man. I was I was really amazed when we first got him. Usually when a big man uh, is that big, he doesn't have the mechanics to skate that well. And Dylan was a, a had great mechanics. So it's, it's all about strength and conditioning a little bit from that standpoint. And he's really taken a huge step in that area. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's doing in the next series because it's going to be a big, heavy series. Uh, North Bay's got a, a big set of defense in the back end. They defend hard. Um, they swarm hard and they play physical. And, and I think it's going to be a, a great matchup for a series for like uh, Dylan Rubrick or guys like Rasmus Kupalainen and, and, you know, all our big fours. But uh, Dylan has, you know, give him a lot of credit because he's really done a great job in the summertime of getting bigger and stronger. And obviously we're obviously looking forward to seeing what he does at the next level, moving on to the American Hockey League or possibly, possibly the National Hockey League. And one for Coach Ulihan. Coach, uh, everybody wants to talk about Ty Nelson uh, on the back end, but uh, you guys made a big acquisition to the trade deadline, getting Bronson Ride from the Niagara Ice Dogs. You gave up a lot of draft picks, and including a solid goaltender in Charlie Robertson. What have you liked since Ride's come over? Again, not the uh, not not the highest point total defenseman, but uh, he's obviously a big body back there, a big active stick. And what has he really added uh, to your defensive core? And what has he kind of you know taken a step forward in since coming over at the deadline? Well, at the time where when we kind of made the decisions of, you know, things that we could add to our group or or kind of round out our hockey team was was more depth on the back end. Um, Bronson was a guy that that kind of came available to us and immediately, again, watching him 
watching what he can do on a nightly basis and the style of play that we want to play here and, and how we want to defend and how we want to do things, we thought it would be a really good match. Um, you know, somebody that uh, since he's come is, has worked extremely close and hard with Billy Holder to really kind of accelerate the development, you know, in, in the last two months to get him ready for the playoffs. And he's been a guy that that's been able to provide that kind of that physicality for us. Um, you know, somebody that's willing to step up and, and protect some teammates and, and do that type of thing. I think he's become a little bit of a crowd favorite here in North Bay in, in his short stint already. Uh, but yeah, he, he, somebody that when you have somebody that that size that can move and, and, and pivot and do things that he can do, you know, he's able to use a stick that's just six inch longer than everybody else. And it can just really add to, you know, the, the way we want to play and, and how we want to do things. So we've been really happy with his, you know, not just him, but some other additions that were made at the trade deadline. I think this year above and beyond more than any other year for us is every fit that we've brought in has been what we have needed and, and has really added to, to the depth and, and the overall makeup of our team. Thanks for that, Brandon. Uh, next, we'll go to Amanda Zerkowski with Eastlink TV. Amanda, go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, so my first question is for Liam. Uh, you're eligible to be back in the lineup on the 28th. Uh, having to watch the Wolves Battalion series, what impressed you most about your club in that series? And if I can go back to maybe a specific moment where I think I knew that series was over for Sudbury was the third period of game three, when you guys came back, uh, it was just an unbelievable effort by your crew. But what was that difference maker for your team? I think just uh, how prepared we were. I mean, obviously we were down guys, but I think the whole series we played the first, uh, we played the whole 60 minutes and I think that really frustrated them. And uh, we never gave them really a chance to come back and uh, compete with us. So I think just competing the whole uh, four games, 60 minutes, I think that's what really I was proud of most of the group. Okay. And then for Coach Laxdale, you're up against a team that you've played only a handful of times this year. What do you feel is going to be the biggest challenge in facing off against a North Bay Battalion team that you really haven't had a great look at other than maybe watching some film so far? Well, you're asking me a pretty difficult question. It's kind of a loaded question for Ryan. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to have to match their experience. Um, there's a team that's been in the conference final three years in a row. And if you look at the structure from both teams, both teams are, are very structured and the players buy into the systems, what's being taught. And I think at the end of the day, it's just, it's going to come down to, you know, some breaks in the game. They're going to come back down to discipline. It's going to come down to compete. And obviously goaltending is going to play a huge factor in the series. Both teams are great goaltenders. And, um, but, that being said, it, it, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting game one, and, and it's going to come down to adjustments. You know, Ryan's going to make adjustments. We're going to make adjustments, and I think that's what's going to make it to be a, a great series moving forward. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Douglas Boyd from Rogers TV, uh, Rogers TV Durham. You can go ahead, Douglas. Derek, and sir, where did you see this? turning point for your organization this season there's a lot of up and down to the beginning of the season where did you where was the turning point in your eyes that you knew that this team had a chance to go all the way well we uh you know obviously you have organizational expectations coming to the start of the season and our our first expectation was trying to get in the playoffs and then obviously from there it's just trying to win a round and and try and win two rounds you know and uh try and get this group ready for moving forward and and but this team reminds me a lot of the team I had in Edmonton, my first or my second year in Edmonton. And the term I use is young and stubborn. And uh, around that Christmas time, when when Richie Callum Richie came back, and the uh, acquisition of Connor Lockhart, we, we just knew we had some pieces in place. You know, we we flipped out uh, Thomas Stewart for Connor Punnett. We just knew that Connor was a bigger, heavier guy, but uh, Thomas was a great uh, leader for our hockey club. But that was a tough trade to make. But when we uh, when we brought in that back end, Zachary Zandu, and we got a little bigger, a little heavier as a group, we knew we had the makeup um, of a team that you know could possibly win a round or two. And but we liked that the kids were buying in. The, the kids um, they have to they have to trust what they're being taught. And I thought our kids really bought into it and started to uh, implement some of the teaching, some of the structure, 
and they gained some confidence in their game. They said they're like kind of like, hey, this stuff's working. So, and when that happens, they grow. And it's great to see these young kids take strides because they all have goals of playing in, at the next level or getting an NHL contract or going on to CIU school and and taking the next phase of their life. But uh, from our standpoint, it just I think from that Christmas time, this team really started to grow. Again, like I said, we're one of the youngest teams in the OHL. And with that being said, it's great to see these kids grow uh, physically and uh, and mentally throughout the season. And, you know, uh, good on the kids for buying in. It's great to see them having some fun when, in the first two rounds. And, and hopefully we can keep this train rolling. And for you, Stuart? I think pretty similar. I think I kind of saw when uh, the calendar flipped to 2024. I think uh, that's when I realized that um you know everyone on the team was buying into our systems and I think that's when we all realized that uh you know if we play the right way you know we're going to give ourselves the chance to to win hockey games every night and I think that's what we did and you know that led to us eventually uh you know finishing the year on that that winning streak and um I you know we've continued playing the same way into the playoffs and it's it's been giving us success all right thank you so much Thanks, Douglas. Um, at this time, we have no further questions. We have time for for one more. If uh, someone else uh, has anything further, uh, and if not, we will uh, we will end things right there. Uh, really looking forward to the series. And for those of you on the call uh, that are going to be in Oshawa Friday night or in North Bay for Game Three, I look forward to seeing you all. Uh, thanks for your participation. Uh, this afternoon and best of luck to everybody. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. See you Friday.